I've always thought Kyrie was special. It took Kyrie a little longer to embrace the skills and the talents that he was blessed with. Once he did embrace the talent and skill set that he was blessed with, that the sky was the limit for him. So many drills outside of my backyard. I mean, like the first day, like fifth grade when I built uh, our first basketball hoop, it was like, <laughs> I still remember that day and it was crazy. And then from to think how far I've come like from, from then until now, it's like, it's crazy. Everybody thinks, you know, I don't want to just be labeled as a basketball player, you know, aside from basketball off the court, I'm a normal kid. You know, I laugh, I joke, everybody kind of gets me, you know, miss, you know, kind of gets me confused. I think I'm in the spotlight too much, but also I'm just a normal kid. Look, man, Kyrie may have strived for normalcy, but he was meant to stand out. A master of the baritone, lover of high school musical. <laughs> Yeah, dude, master of singing. It is the sweetest name I know. But life wasn't always easy. Kyrie was born in Australia while his dad, Dredrick, played for the Bowen Bombers. Dredrick, once the number one scorer for Boston University, hailed from the rough Mitchell housing projects in the Bronx, where he met Kyrie's future godfather and former NBA player, Rod Strickland. After college, Dredd and Kyrie's mom, Elizabeth, married and flew to Australia, thus the playing days. After a few years, father and son moved home to the East Coast, settling in New Jersey, where Dredd commuted each day to Wall Street as a financial broker, while Elizabeth worked in Washington. At a young age, tragedy struck the Irving family. I lost my mother when I was four. It was just me, my sister, my father. That was it, the triangle, we call ourselves the triangle. There was also another near tragedy. While working in New York City on September 11, 2001, Dred Irving was doing his morning routine, walked through the lobby of the World Trade Center from the train station. He was there when the planes flew into the buildings. All I could think of was, I've got to get to my kids, Dredd said. He walked for nine hours to the Bronx, got in touch with a friend, and was driven to their house. As his daughter and son got older, he became that much more involved, and the bond grew between father and son. I only had one hero. He's still my hero today, is my father. Um, he was my favorite player growing up, <laughs> until Chris Paul went to the NBA. Yeah. So, my father was my... He was, he was my idol. More importantly, Dredd instilled confidence in Kyrie and made him dream. In fourth grade, I wrote on the wall in my closet that I was going to make it to the NBA, Irving said. I put promise, and I underlined it three times. In eighth grade, Irving said, my father told me I would wind up as the best guard in the state of New Jersey. In my senior year, he told me I'd be the number one player in the country. Then in college, he told me I'd be the number one pick in the draft. He laid out all the necessary steps for me. It was up to me what I did with them. I thank my father. He did things the old school way. No shortcuts, nothing guaranteed. So what happened in high school? At Montclair Academy, Kyrie killed the competition, scoring over a thousand points, winning a state prep championship. By the way, no starter over six foot one, kind of a crutch. I guess you could say he danced his way to a title. As his old coach recalls, Kyrie was uber committed to the game. You knew right away as a 14-year-old freshman you were dealing with something special. During this free period, all the other kids would be hanging out. Kyrie would be in my office breaking down film. Dredd started to sense the competition could improve, so he made calls seeking a transfer for Kyrie, even dialing Bobby Hurley Sr. at St. Anthony's High School. Dredd never heard back. Standing at 5'10", going into his junior year, Kyrie landed at St. Patrick's, a powerhouse team that had five D1 players. Who are you? One boy asked upon Kyrie's arrival. I don't know who you are. It was Michael Kidd Gilchrist, current Charlotte Hornet and former Kentucky Wildcat. MKG failed he had a point to prove. The first day of practice, Kidd Gilchrist heaves the ball at the bashful newcomer and chortles with a half smile. You and me. Let's go. Irving dazzled one of the top prospects in the country and earned his respect in a simple game of one-on-one. -on -one. He wasn't afraid, Kid Gilchrist said, of anybody. His teammates would say he was ahead of everyone mentally and he was doing stuff we'd never seen before. Kyrie always put in the hours. He played at the Young Men's and Young Women's Hebrew Association with his AAU coach, I know Hebrew, where gym temps would reach 120 degrees. He added late night one-on-one -on -one games at St. Patrick's. Cleveland Cavaliers big man and former rival high school star Tristan Thompson called Kyrie a mystery man. Remember Old Kill Academy? I mean, how could you not if you're a basketball fan? A dominant program producing dominant players like Kevin Durant, Carmelo Anthony, Rajon Rondo, Michael Beasley, Jerry Stackhouse. Well, Kyrie went against this school, dropped 28. Still, Dredd pushed his son. Quote, hey, did you guys see Kyrie play tonight? I didn't see him out there. Did anyone else see him? 
As Bleacher Report notes, it's a soft dig, but they all know what it means. Don't you ever give up the ball with the game on the line, because that's what he did. To no surprise, Kyrie was recruited heavily. October 2009, he made his decision. Are you committing to Duke University? I'll be a blue devil next year. Kyrie would only go on to play 11 games because of a twisted ligament in his bright big toe. He averaged 17 and a half points per about three rebounds, four dimes, shooting 53% from the field. Rehab was hard, but Kyrie prevailed, returning for the NCAA tournament, where they, Duke, lost to Derek Williams in Arizona in the Sweet 16. It was vital for Kyrie to return in college. Quote, I truly believe I wouldn't have come out if I played only eight games. Number one, I came to prove to everyone that I was ready for the NBA. And number two, I wanted to stop all the questions whether I was healthy enough. I didn't play in the NCAA tournament, I wouldn't have come out. Kyrie Irving, Duke point guard. Can you make a similar immediate impact as a rookie that some of those guys have in this past decade? Uh, right now, I'm not sure. Um, right now, I'm just working towards doing that. You're a week away from the draft, Kyrie. What do you expect this last week leading up to the draft to be like for you? Um, it's not going to be different from any other week. Then came the draft lottery. The number one pick yes. in the 2011 NBA draft belongs to the Cleveland Cavaliers. And draft night. The Cleveland Cavaliers select Kyrie Irving from Duke University. But the cheers would turn to jeers. I'm going to take my talents to South Beach. Kyrie inherited a dumpster fire. LeBron leaves, the town goes mad, a savior is needed. While LeBron led the Heat to three straight finals, Kyrie averaged nearly 21 points per, winning the Rookie of the Year, dazzled at Madison Square Garden, becoming the youngest player to score 40, all-Star Game MVP as well, all while the team averaged a measly 26 wins. Then going into the 2014-2015 season, free agency happened. The last sentence is the only sentence that really matters. The last sentence is, I'm ready to accept the challenge, I'm coming home. As we all know by now, Kyrie Irving hit the biggest shot in finals history. Game 7 in Oakland against the best regular season team in NBA history, the 73-9 Warriors. Kyrie, who inherited a franchise that needed a star, was just that. He won a title with LeBron and now seeked his own throne in another basketball kingdom. Kyrie Irving going to Boston. Isaiah Thomas going to Cleveland. Through it all, Kyrie Irving from front yard dunker to doubted by coaches, players, and fans has proven his greatness, and that it's not the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog. He has won, and he has lost, but he will always strive for more. He hasn't yet, and we doubt he ever will.